Um, it's the presentation of um, biannual report of the COSAC. Therefore, I would like to ask Mr. Bruno Diaz Pinheiro to present this work. My slower. De Bruno, the floor is yours. Uh, dear chairpersons, dear members, dear colleagues, uh, many thanks. Good morning. And let me start by thanking the um, Czech Presidency for the warm welcome and for the opportunity also to present the 38th biannual report here today. Uh, I would also like to thank all delegations for the effort they put into replying to the questionnaire. We received replies from 26 out of 27 member states plus the European Parliament, which allowed us to have enough time to go through all the data and also draft the report. Finally, I also would like to thank my colleagues from the COSA Secretariat for the hard work they put and the dedication in this endeavor, since this is a collective work that benefits greatly from our team, team spirit. The report has been distributed to all delegations. We hope you had the time to at, at least have a, a first look at it. We will have the chance to watch a very short uh, video with some of the main findings, but allow me nevertheless to highlight a couple of ideas. The, the three topics chosen by the presidency and endorsed by the Troika and all the chairpersons are at the core of the main political and institutional debates in the European Union and European Union at the moment. Therefore, this report gave parliaments the chance to express their views and official positions on a range of very important issues. The three topics chosen and as defined by the outline were, as you know, the Conference on the Future of Europe, the COSAC Working Groups, and e the EU, Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. On the first chapter, the Conference on the Future of Europe, I would like to highlight that this is the fifth consecutive time that the report has a chapter on the Conference on the Future of Europe, which shows how relevant this exercise has been for all parliaments since 2020. The chapter examined the participation of parliaments in the proceedings of, of, the, of the conference, and also compiled the positions of the parliaments and chambers on the proposals of the Conference on the Future of Europe that were relating to institutional affairs and democratic procedures, including citizens. On the COSAC Working Groups, uh, second chapter, it shed light on the support of parliaments and chambers for the proposals uh, drafted by these working groups uh, during the French presidency uh, of the Council, the parliamentary dimension, one working group on the role of national parliaments and the other one on the place of values at the heart of the sense of belonging. This chapter surveyed the priorities of parliaments among these proposals and the possible implementation. Finally, the third chapter seeks to examine whether parliaments or and chambers have debated the Russian aggression and invasion of Ukraine and whether any resolutions had been adopted. Uh, so, as you can see, the report addressed a wide range of very meaningful questions that we hope can be useful during the debates at the COSAC plenary and remain as an important landmark for our future discussions. Uh, in fact, this report had an enhanced responsibility since, as the Czech presidency announced during the chairperson's meeting uh, held in July here, here in Prague, the replies to this questionnaire and the findings of the biennial report would form the basis for the political deliberations regarding the contribution and conclusions to be adopted tomorrow. Therefore, we hope this work has also served this purpose and contribute to very meaningful discussions. Enjoy the reading and we remain at your disposal for any further questions. We can now watch the short video with the main findings. Děkuje.
Ja, ja, děkuji. Thank you very much for your presentation as well as for